Greetings AP Calculus AB students, Mr. Record here from Avon High School for video number two with topic 4.6, Linear Approximations. Let's take a look at our next example. As you can see, example two here, and I got some stuff in the way, let me move that. There we go, now we'll start. As we can see with our example two, we're asked to use a calculator and find the error in using the linear approximation to f of x equal e to the x at x equals zero. And we're going to approximate something very unusual, the fourth root of e. Now, hopefully you watched the last video because it sort of segues nicely into this video. In the last video, I asked you to approximate what you think the cubed root of 8.1 was without using a calculator. And for the most part, many of you probably would have thought something a little bigger than 2, which is a really good approximation. But the fourth root of e might be a little bit tough, right? You know, e is this weird number, 2.71, blah, 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 blah. What number times itself times itself times itself again would equal that irrational number? Definitely a little bit, little bit trickier. So we're going to use this idea of linear approximation much in the same way that we've done uh, our, our, we did our previous problem and and how we're going to continue to do problems in the future. And that is to write the equation of the tangent line. And so that's going to require that we start with our derivative f prime of x, which we know is just equal to e to the x. So that was pretty easy. If we evaluate the derivative at 0, that's not bad, right? e to the 0 we know is equal to 1. But we also have to find f of 0 right because we want to write the equation of a line so we need a point and a slope and that would also give us one so we have the same y value as we do the slope sometimes that happens it's okay and this x here would be zero in that case now remember from the very beginning lesson we talked about how we can let y be l of x i can move that one over and this is just one way to write it. It's not mandatory that you do this, but I'll tell you what, if you end up taking BC later on in Unit 10, it's going to be kind of nice to be familiar with this because we're going to expand on that idea big time. All right, from here, what do you do? Well, I'll tell you what I want to do. I want to approximate the fourth root of E. But I have to think about what does that mean within the context of this function f, right? f is defined as e to some exponent. So the common misconception might be to take your little 4, that's your root there, and try to plug it in here. But that's not what we want, because the fourth root of e is e to the 1 fourth. So we want to evaluate f of 1 fourth. And we know that that can be approximated by our lines equation that we just discovered. And so in this case, L of 1 fourth is just 1 plus a fourth. And at that point, you can call this either 1 and a quarter, or you can say 1.25, because we don't really need a calculator to convert something like that. And you just kind of go with the flow, if, look at the multiple choice options if there were any, and then just answer the question. But this particular problem actually goes on and asks something a little bit more in depth. It asks you to uh, find the error. So I'm going to give you a bit of a new um, take or a new formula, if you will, but it actually may not be new. If you've taken some advanced science classes, uh, it's very likely that you've computed errors when you're doing some of your experiments. And the error definition that we like to work with is the absolute value of the actual answer minus an estimated or approximate answer. Now, if this was a relative error, you would probably divide that by actual and convert to a percent, but we don't need to do that. Now, the fact that this is an absolute value is kind of a, a, a nice thing because we don't really care which one we put first. Whichever one's bigger doesn't have to go first. We don't have to get a positive answer because I just want a positive distance that I am from the actual. So let's figure this out by going to our calculator. Now remember, what are the, the two things that we want to figure out? Well, the actual answer, which is the fourth root of e, and then the estimated answer which we found to be 
let's see what the calculator gives us. So here we go. So, hmm, let's see, which one do we want to do first? Well, it really doesn't matter. How about we put that fourth root of E? Now I'm using the TI Inspire. You can really use any scientific calculator to do this. But if I wanted to find the fourth root of E, now I'm kind of in for an interesting situation here because this calculator is kind of a, a show off because it's a cast calculator. If I hit enter, it's going to say, yeah, the fourth root of E is E to the one fourth. Well, thanks for that but that's not what I needed. So I can choose control enter to make sure that I get a decimal answer of 1.28403. Now, if you remember, what we're computing is the absolute value, which I don't really think the absolute value symbols is gonna matter much here. But if I grew up and, and grab that value, 1.28403 with all of those decimal places, and then I subtract our answer, which is our estimated of 1.25, I'm going to end up with a 0 0.034. So let's write this up back in our notes and wrap the question up. So here we are back at our problem. If you recall, our actual answer was about 1.284. I know we had some more decimals there. Um, in fact, maybe I could call this error an approximate error because I'm never going to get an exact error because of the irrational value that we got out of this fourth root of E. And our estimated was 1.25 exactly. Well, we saw that the difference between those was going to be 0 0.034. And of course, the absolute value of those is just the same because it's positive. And so what that means is... I'm only 34 one thousandths off of this actual answer that I got, and I really didn't break a sweat. It was pretty easy to do this work here in blue and that purple. So once again, a really powerful way to see how linear approximation can accomplish some pretty interesting things in the world of mathematics. We've got one more video to show you uh, with linear approximation. We hope you tune in for that one. In the meantime, thanks for joining. We'll see you.